welcome back to my fourth episode of the Ravabanis podcast. I'm Lydia and I've been to Seoul in February for two weeks and I had planned to film this video way earlier but life got in the way and I'm happy I've waited because we might get a little cameo in this video from Frodo the Golden, which is my friend Sandra's golden retriever. And he's the nicest dog you'll ever meet. And he's currently chilling in our hallway <laughs> because I'm dog sitting him for her since she has an appointment right now. And maybe you'll see her in this video as well. And perhaps I'll turn on the camera later on when we have some meeting time together. And yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna share all the soul footage in this video in the end or just keep this one very knit focused, but I don't have all that much soul footage, so I might just chuck it in at the end. So long story short, it was such a lovely adventurous amazing time in South Korea and it was a blast I would 10 out of 10 recommend doing that but my friend and I talked about it if we had such a good time because of the place we went to or because of the group we traveled as and I couldn't tell um, I think the people who you're traveling with make all the difference you could go to the nicest place in the world if with icky people <laughs> and it would be icky so um, I'm very glad to have had such a great experience in such a foreign place that was also very interesting to experience because I've mostly traveled Europe and Western countries really. So it was very interesting to me to, to feel very foreign and to not understand a single thing. Though I tried to learn <laughs> um, saying hello, goodbye and thank you and it took me four days because it's I don't know I was jet lagged like let's keep it at that <laughs> but um, yeah it was so nice our friend um, gave us all the insights all the tips and tricks and showed us around and we stayed with her since she's studying Korean and she's living in Korea for a year and then her boyfriend and his best friend came so we were a jolly group of five <laughs> and yeah we went to all the cafes drank all the coffee and it's true what they say coffee in Korea hits different and I'm someone who gets very anxious and and uneasy when I drink coffee I don't know if it's ADHD and caffeine or just Lydia and caffeine but something happens and I just get so anxious and my heart races and I can't do it but everyone in Korea drinks iced no, not everyone probably but I feel like everyone drinks iced coffee and now I'm hooked on it um, but I do decaf and oat milk here in Korea I drank um, cow's milk and caffeinated coffee and I didn't have any problems but here I don't do so well with those and <laughs> totally different topic I wanted to film today because it got so sunny just an hour ago and now it's raining again so if the light conditions change all the time it's March in Germany <laughs> okay that was a lot for the goal and staying with me having traveled to Seoul having odd weather but I think we should get started just with the normal scheduled knitting podcast and then at the end I might get back to some soul searching <laughs> no soul content you can do all the puns with soul <laughs> I think okay what I finished knitting. My pride and joy, the Ramaba sweater chunky. I think in the last video I had about this much knitted and no sleeves and I finished this in less than a week. I don't know what I did. Oh, I, I was sick. That was why. <laughs> I was sick and I really wanted to bring it to Seoul and it turned out so beautiful. Um, it's my favorite sweater I think I ever made because of the yarn combination. I hope you can see this. It's very lightly 
speckled um, with green and orange and the entire undertone is a slight peachy vibe I guess. Um, I held Olivia and Oliver Sorry Silk in Torre di Giralda um, together with Knitting for Olive Hebe Merino in the Color Marzipan and it's so soft, it's so lovely. But funnily enough, none of those uh, yarns are super washed, but it grew so much in the washing, um, like uh, not washing, um, wild blocking, even though I didn't even stretch the arms. I just wanted to see if they were long enough and they are too long, but I love that because I never knit arms long enough. I just get bored knitting arms and just, they always are a little bit shorter than bracelet length, I would say, but this one's very long and I'm gonna try it out for you now. Here we are. I hope my hair is somewhat in place. <laughs> and I was unsure with the neckline because it got a bit higher than I expected. I just wanted it to go like this, like, like two centimeters shorter. But in the end, I really love this. It was so practical. I had it with me in Seoul and I really never wore a scarf when I wore this because it's just so snug on your neck and perfect. I'm thinking when I do release the pattern for this, I will have three options for the neckline. Like one, one will be this. I don't know what you call, what you would call it. Maybe a mock neck and then a folded down collar, which I thought I would do, but I like having the options <laughs> of just tucking it in or having it out. And then a proper turtle neck with the fold outside. Um, yeah, I think that will be a fun way to, to individualize your sweater. And as you can see, the sleeves are pretty long, for me at least. And the length of the sweater is just about hip length, I would say. So it works well with dresses and skirts, but you can also tuck it into your pants. Yeah, love that. <laughs> and yeah, I think I will release this pattern towards autumn because fingers crossed I won't be able to wear it much longer because spring and summer will come and I imagine this in a darker color would be so nice. This is just such a basic piece and very easy to knit, very lovely to make as well. I had so much fun because you knit it on six millimeter needles which goes by so fast but still it's not a very see-through or like holy um, fabric in the end, which I don't like. I don't love knitting on 10 millimeter needles, for instance, because I don't love my fabric to be holy. That sounds so odd. <laughs> but yeah, this is my only finished garment um, in the last month because I decided against bringing a large knitting project to sew with me. But since I've returned, I've started some, but I haven't finished any. So I'm gonna show you two smaller accessories I've finished. Here we go. This was my travel knitting project. The hipster hat by Petit Knit. I can't put it on right now. And I did something wrong whilst blocking. I think you can tell it got too wide. It's so wide. I mean, my head is pretty large, but this is too wide. Um, and a bit too short, I think, for that. So I might re-block it. Do you know if that will work and just tuck it to be sh longer and shorter. I don't know. Let me know if you have any experience with reblocking and changing the, sh the shape. But this is cashmere. It's by Kremke. I originally wanted to make a Sophie shawl out of it, but decided against it because I think a rat hat <laughs> is so fun. And the pattern was really easy. It was just a simple knit, perfect for on the go. And also, I knitted this on the plane a bit. I started it, I cast it on on the plane, and I had no problems taking wooden needles on the plane. I had my like darning needle and a pair of scissors in my checked in luggage, but the wooden needles and cord were no problem to bring on my hand luggage or with me on, on the flight. And then I'm 
trying to find a perfect hat pattern for myself and I thought this was it but it's not so I'm gonna rip it up but this is a prototype of a hat I'm planning on making um, I use the technique um, I saw Petit Nip do where you um, do the preparation rows you do for Italian cast on or tabula bind off um, to just do the fold to have it be in place more nicely like it stays this way and with this whoop, <laughs> with this hat it just doesn't really stay even and this one does I don't know if this is a good technique to show but you get the gist and I don't like the decreases and I think the fold is too short I think I should have done 10 centimeters instead of 7 and just made it a bit longer but the color is um, I think caramel by Focolana I used two strands of Avetta and one of Tilia funnily enough I had the Tilia floating about in my um, leftovers drawer and I hate Tilia <laughs> I think it's the itchiest small hair you can find and for that it's quite expensive but since I had it I thought I'd just use it so I'm gonna rip this up and figure out how to deal with this hat my husband doesn't want it either but I think I can save it and wear it in the coming winter because this winter needs to be finished right about now <laughs> okay on to whips I have finally started my zipper sweater I've had the zipper for it since about a year or no longer longer than a year I think my friend Miriam got it for me when she went to Denmark and um, I always knew I wanted to do it in a light colour and then I saw Sislaje, I don't know how you would say it, I think the G in Danish becomes a J like Oi Petitnes Agnete Cardigan, I think you say Agnete and not Agnet and I think with this brand name I would in German say Sislerget and I think proper would be Sislerge. I don't know I don't know if you know please tell me but long story short I used the tweet from that Danish brand my friend Sandra got for me when she went to Denmark for her birthday this year and it's so beautiful. I'm holding it together with um, a ball of Knitting for Olive soft silk mohair in the colour putty. I think it's my favourite white mohair. And this is how far I am. Pum. Um, I'm knitting a size between small and medium because I don't want it to be quite as oversized as a size medium would be, but um, also not as form fitting as a size small would be. And yeah, it's beautiful, it's super soft, and <laughs> I final okay, final story here. I thought I didn't have jet lag. We returned last week on Monday and arrived at seven in the morning and flew through time and everything was so confusing because what is time? Where are we? Why are we? How do planes work? All the big questions. But <laughs> I didn't have a nap all day and it's eight hour time difference from Korea to Germany and I and we were on the road on the road um, like the, the journey back took us about 20 hours because we had two planes we switched planes in Abu Dhabi and yeah I didn't sleep on Monday and then I woke up at 6 a.m. on Tuesday after I went to bed at 7 p.m. on Monday and I thought I'm, I'm doing so good I'm fully back on German time and then Tuesday evening rolled around and I decided I want to cast this on and this uses Judy's magic cast on for the collar and I've done it before but something in my brain told me I needed to do it differently and everything was just totally confusing to me and I was just lost and I think I had to redo the cast on eight or nine times and yeah that was my jet lag <laughs> because the next day it's like 
this is really easy. <laughs> you just decided to have a hard time letting go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I'm knitting on this and I plan on finishing it in April. I don't uh, have any hurry to finish this and I know I get way out of it um, throughout summer because um, I'm going traveling uh, again to colder climates again and I think this will be the perfect thing to throw over your summer dresses or like tank tops and shorts to warm up a little bit. So warmer sweaters for summer <laughs> and the sun is coming out again. Yay for that! The next thing I'm knitting on is in this plastic baggie for now which has my name on it. More on that later. Um, I showed you in my last knitting podcast that I'm that I got these five balls of Knitting for Olive ochre brown cotton merino. <laughs> wow, that was difficult. And I planned on making a summer dress out of it for my friend's wedding, but since her wedding will be at the end of September, I decided against that and I'm making my billionth <laughs> Anchors um, tea. Yeah, it's going to be an Anchors tea. And I think it's going to be very nice. The colour is a bit like diarrhea, but I like it. <laughs> and it's just a very nice portable knit and it'll take forever. But again, I'm not in a hurry to finish. And this is my second Hubaba sweater which I'm doing very differently to my first, but as you might be able to tell, it's not blue anymore. When I showed it to you in the last video, I just, I had in mind to do some blue color work or, ah, basically the color of my nail polish to do stripes in this color, but I didn't like it. And I do have a lot of this red um, drops alpaca silk yarn um so i think i might do this entirely in this color or i'll do some white stripes perhaps we'll see but i don't have a red sweater so that could be something to add on to my wardrobe with and yeah i need to get on with this because the knit along is still going yeah it'll st it's still running until the 1st of april so if you want to join, please do. <laughs> and before I get into my acquisitions, I just wanted to mention my friend Sandra, who imported the yarn for my zipper sweater and whose dog I'm currently watching, uh, also has a YouTube channel. So if you want to see Frodo, who's being a bit camera shy and still chilling out in the hallway, um, you should check her out. I'm going to link her down below. She's a very gentle and encouraging and loving soul, so I think you'll enjoy her content as well. And now on to my next knitting friend, Malino, who has the famous knitting podcast, Malino Knits, um, got me a little Galentine's present and, and she got me this cone of, I think it's mohair or I don't know, it doesn't say, but it'll be perfect to hold with all my little small projects, which is what she had in mind because I'm in my small project era right now. Or I'm gonna hold it together with the Olivia and Oliver Ignok Merino yarn I showed you in the last video to make something out of that. So, good times and I'm so thankful. So thank you, Malena. And I have more yarn because Knitting for Olive had a sale where all the proceeds would go to the Red Cross in the Ukraine since the war is still raging. Um, yeah, they had a day where all the sales would go towards a great cause and because I like spending money on yarn and on charity that combined those two and I got a lot of yarn. <laughs> But before I get to the knitting for olive yarn, I have to show you three other skeins that I got because that's who I am. <laughs> um, there's a German hand dye I called Phoebe and Mercy. I've told you about her before and she has a lot of the rings yarn collection. And if you know anything about me, you'll know that Lord of the Rings was my first great love. And then came my husband. <laughs> and those and those are 
are the two yarns I got. Those are for socks and this is the BFL high twist sock. I love Lorien. Isn't it beautiful? I think it's going to be such a beautiful sock. I don't think I'm going to hold it with um, a contrast yarn or anything. Same with this merino high twist sock in the color peregrine took. It's so fun with the colored speckles and stuff. And yeah, I'm so happy. And my plan is to stock off my sock drawer this year with hand knit socks and also gift knit a lot of socks, which leads me to my next scheme, which is this one by Olivia and Oliver. It's the classic DK in the colorway prickly pear, which is so fun. And I've already caked one skein up, I got two, and started knitting with it because I'm planning on making for my family and my husband's family socks for Christmas and you got to start in March if you have big families. And I think it's going to be around 10 or 12 people I have to knit socks for. And I thought I'd do accents with this so there's a coherence within the socks. I got all the shoe sizes and preferred colors written down from everybody and we'll add some details with this yarn because I think they mostly wanted like purple, blue or green or gray socks and this will be a fun way to add some color to that. I had a bit of a hard time to think about what I wanted to knit this year for myself um, because I don't know if you, if you shared the same feelings. I've knit so much over the years. I think I have about 30 or 35 garments over the years. I've sold on some, but um, yeah, I don't know. But still, as with any kind of fashion, there are new releases and you find new patterns that you really like or new yarn colors or combinations. So I'm really into making myself beautiful garments and I have one sweater that I've always wanted to knit. That's actually the garment I saw and knew I want to learn to knit garments three years ago and that's the waffle sweater by Knitting for Olive. I'm gonna blend in a picture somewhere, blend in, um, <laughs> put in a picture um, and the colors I will use for this are um, putty and powder and probably one strand of We Are Knitters mohair in the white because I want it to be very light but dimensional and this is going to be so beautiful. So I got the yarn for that sweater minus the We Are Knitters one. And okay, you know my like lavender purpley Sunday sweater. I wear it all the time. I'm gonna put her in pictures as well. <laughs> and my friend Sandra again is currently knitting a Kumulus blouse in this color combination, and it's so beautiful and. This is Dusty Honey and this is Trench Coat, both in the Soft Silk Mohair from Knitting for Olive. And together it's a very yellow beige or beige yellow. And I think it's basically a neutral, but with a bit more dimension and life to it than just a straight up beige. And I love that. And I love my Sunday sweater. So I thought, what would be better than a Sunday sweater in this colorway? How fun. <laughs> I got the yarn for those two sweaters and then one ball of the compatible cashmere in the color rose clay and it's so tiny <laughs> and I don't know what I'm gonna make with it but I wanted to try the cashmere I think I've tried every other type of yarn knitting for olive cells um, but not this one and it's just so pretty I might make a Sophie scarf out of this yeah so this is it. Um, and I got a couple more of the putty soft silk mohair for my zipper sweater.
So that was very expensive, that order. I don't want to um, make light of that, but I decided to purchase the yarn for the two larger projects I want to do in the coming months on that day because it was all donated and that makes it very worthwhile in my opinion. Okay, that was about it with my current knits and everything, but I do have three balls of yarn I got in Korea and a few skincare bits. So if you want to see that and a couple impressions from Korea, then stay on. If not, see you next time. And I'm so thankful you're watching and hanging around. And oh, I totally forgot. <laughs> we are over a thousand people around here. I don't know how that happened, when that happened, why that happened, but I'm so happy to have you here and hope you enjoy watching the stuff I show and tell and can relax and find some inspiration or joy or encouragement through those videos and I'm very happy to have you and I'm excited where this journey will take us. My Korea haul, here we go. <laughs> we went to the Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art and I got this print because it's so fun and I aspire to be colourful and not beige anymore. <laughs> so. This was my first step. And in that museum there were exhibitions and I got this little pamphlet they had. Oh no, it's not little, but I thought it would be so fun to just frame it or print it, um, uh, cut it up and do something with it because Korean is such a beautiful language to look at. It's, it's in itself art. And the yarn I got at Bano store. It has a beautiful cafe, that store, and this beautiful wall of yarn and a lot of swatches, a lot of garment you can look at. The yarn selection wasn't that great, but I would still recommend going there. The first thing I got is this cotton mini cone. It's 150 grams and 330 meters made in Korea. This beautiful dark green color. And I thought I would make um, some kitchen accessories with it because we do have a green kitchen and it might be pretty to match it or some coasters for our table. And then I got these little um, balls. One is satin alpaca mohair and one is satin merino wool. Both in the color, no, this one is the color 2201 and this is the color 2212, I think. Yeah. And I plan on making a balaclava with it. I think it should be enough. Um, maybe the one by my favorite thing that wear. And yeah, I think that would be fun and a bit of a change for the house. Next up, I got a book, Kim Yong, born 1982. Um, my friend recommended it to me and I think it's going to be an exciting and mind-opening read and my nail polish matches so perfectly. <laughs> um, since Korea is known for the beautiful stationery they have, I got something but not very much. Um, I got PJ stickers because we drank so much PJ and it was so fun. Some flower stickers and a pretty illustrated world map. And then I got some postcards in the museum again. Something I got from my husband that he asked for were chopsticks and a beautiful pink walnut wood. And a little soy sauce dish with a koi fish on the bottom. And chopstick holders, a duck and a turtle. Um, those I all got um, from vendors on the street. It was really inexpensive. Generally, I felt Seoul was very 
inexpensive compared to Germany, especially at this time. And yeah, we didn't do a lot of shopping, but the shopping we did was... <laughs> then one thing we did a few times were these photo booths and it was so much fun. They have them all over the city. Very inexpensive. I think you pay around four to eight thousand won, which would be like three to six euros ish, and you get a couple of those photo strips. And they have props, and it's just really fun and a beautiful memory to have. Um, Next up, we went to Olive Young a couple of times, which is basically their Sephora or Douglas. And I got pimple patches and a lot, a lot, a whole lot of sheet masks. Um, I already gifted quite a few and I still have some to gift and they are all so pretty. Um, this one I plan on using myself and yeah, they are all very nice. and another packet of pimple patches and yeah that was a good thing to, to shop I think <laughs> and <laughs> another thing I got at Olive Young were quite a few tubes of sunscreen my friend recommended this to me it's by Round Lab I think it's their birch sunscreen I can't read a word on this, but it's um, SPF 50 and it's beautiful. It basically feels like just a very light moisturizer on your skin, but it's so nice and I stocked up for the year. <laughs> I'm missing a few things, but I also got the um, eye serum and eye cleansing oil. I think that's in here. Yeah, the cleansing oil is in here. It's by Beauty of Joson. Um, I got the cleansing oil. My friend has it and loves it. And she is my true influencer. <laughs> and I really like the serum I got. I think I got the propolis and niacinamide one. It's beautiful. And then I, after returning to Germany, I found that you can get those products on Amazon. So I ordered the toner as well. And one thing I don't have with me, but I have on my face, and I have the refill here, is by Laneige, their Neo Cushion Foundation. And I've never tried a cushion foundation, but it's amazing. I don't know what it is. I got the matte version in this color, not in the purple pink one. And it just stays and it looks like skin and it, it's just very very nice and I'm very happy I got it and it came with a refill as well. Then I have two last items. Um, <laughs> I think if you've watched any soul vlogs you'll have seen those stores but I went to Nonfiction and got the Gentle Night Body Lotion which smells so so nice and I thought about getting the perfume but I've just gotten a new one and I thought a body lotion would feel more luxurious and nice to, to treat myself with. And then we went to Temperance and I got the hand sanitizer gel because I like the bottle so much. And it's very nice as well. Um, but I plan on using the bottle for something else afterwards. And it's just, it has so much detail and the design is spectacular, I think looks a bit like a fancy oil bottle <laughs> so to say it with the words of my friend who we traveled with that's enough with the soap <laughs> and that was my haul from Korea um, and we ate so much good food and had just great company and saw so much of the city and it was just a two week straight up adventure and I'm so thankful and glad that we went and yeah I'm having some of the memories to slather myself in now <laughs> but um yeah that was the haul and I'm gonna blend in uh, not blend in that's German I'm gonna put in some clips of my time in Korea I didn't film much because we were on the go and it was just 
so much chaos and I didn't think about it, but what I have, I'll show now. Hi, and hello from Seoul. We're going yarn shopping now and it's so awkward talking to the camera when my friend is holding it, but we're so excited, at least I am. I hope my friends are okay with doing this. <laughs> now it's voiceover time in the photo booth you'll get a little video of you taking the pictures and they are so precious and we browsed through Hongdae and Myeongdong quite a few times and it's such a fun area with a lot of cafes and little things you can discover and one evening we went up to Namsan Tower and the view was so beautiful from the cable car up and the sunset colours divine and probably the colour theme for this trip as well and lastly we went to this bibimbap place which has a couple of michelin stars and everything was great and thank you again for watching thank you for being over a thousand of you and see you next time bye bye